Peripheral Jumper. Item number SCP-372. Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-372 is to be contained in a cell 5 meters by 4 meters by 2 meters lined with reinforced plexiglass. Embedded into each of the four walls of this cell will be one infrared motion detector. Feeding will take place once every two weeks to consist of one kilograms of red meat and uncooked vegetables to be deposited in its cell via chute. All guards working near SCP-372's cell must wear helmets with cameras mounted in the forehead with live feeds to the nearest guard station. In the event of a containment breach, an alert will be sounded that all personnel should watch for any brief flickering movements in the corner of their eyes, and to report immediately if one is sighted. Description: SCP-372 is a creature of unknown genus, approximately 2 meters long from head to tail, and weighing approximately 45 kilograms. It has a long, thin body with 8 pairs of narrow limbs. Analysis has shown that its muscle fibers are redacted, allowing for extremely fast and precise movements. Every part of the body is abnormally flexible, and the limbs are coated with small fibers that cling to almost any solid surface. In place of eyes or ears, it has data expunged. This sensory organ is capable not only of echolocation, but also of detecting energy transfers, such as the electrical impulses in the brains of nearby beings. SCP-372 has learned to time its movements to those pulses, predicting the movements of any being around it. It uses this technique to hide, either by hiding behind the head of a person looking for it, or by hiding in their scotomas, blind spots, and saccades, clipping during eye movement. SCP-372 first came to the attention of the Foundation on blank, when an undercover agent working at blank reported seeing a creature that resembled the described hallucinations of one of the patients, Mr. Blank. After thorough investigation, SCP-372 was captured via redacted and it was determined that it had, for unknown reasons, been tormenting the unfortunate patient. It had confused him by periodically following him, and remaining within sight of him while hiding outside the visual fields of those around him, making him believe that he was hallucinating a monster no one else could see. Unfortunately, the patient had by this time actually become mentally unbalanced due to stress, and data expunged. Log of Tests on SCP-372 Participants 2D Class Personnel Location Empty room, 6 meters by 5 meters by 3 meters. Test parameters. D1 was instructed to stand in the middle of the room, D2 in the corner. Both were to perform a visual search of the room. SCP-372 was released into the testing room. After 5 minutes, armed personnel entered and ushered SCP-372 back into its holding cell, and D1 and D2 were debriefed. Results. After 5 minutes, D1 reported no sighting, and D2 only detected a few brief flashes. Participants 2D Class Personnel Location Empty room 6 meters by 5 meters by 3 meters Test parameters D1 and D2 were instructed to stand in opposite corners of the room and to make a visual inspection of the room once SCP-372 is released into the containment room. Results After 5 minutes, both D-Class had sighted SCP-372 15 times, both at identical times. It is believed that SCP-372 was darting around in the spots where the blind spots in their vision overlapped, and occasionally had to break cover and dart into another one when one area was no longer overlapping. Participants 4D Class Personnel Location Empty room 6 meters by 5 meters by 3 meters Test parameters D1, D2, D3, and D4 were instructed to stand in the four corners of the room and watch SCP-372. Results Approximately 1.5 seconds after SCP-372 was introduced into the testing area, D3 shrieked and collapsed, spurting blood from a wound on his redacted that seemed to have spontaneously appeared. D1, D2, and D4 abandoned their stations and ran for the locked exit. D4 began pounding on the door before he was also injured, losing one blank. D1 and 2 retreated into one corner, D1 curling up into the fetal position while D2 stood absolutely still. No activity was reported for the remainder of the five-minute test. When the test was ended, D3 had expired, D4 required surgical redacted, and D1 and D2 were not physically harmed. None of the surviving test subjects reported seeing SCP-372 at any time. Notes: Aside from what it did to that mental patient, this is the first time it's actively harmed a person. D3 didn't really have time to do anything that pissed it off either. Did it just get hungry? Dr. Blank. Addendum. 
Anyone pranking nervous personnel by pretending to see SCP-372 in front of them will be severely reprimanded. 05-blank. 